In this video, I'll introduce you to SurveyFlow. This is where the magic happens in Qualtrics. I'll use it to show you how we can screen people out of a survey or show only certain people a block of questions based on their previous answers or certain other criteria. For example, the Problem Gambling Severity Index blocks will only be shown to people who gamble. And the Help Seeking block will only be shown to people with a certain score um, or higher in the PGSI. Plus I'll show you what you can do when you screen people out of a survey. So let's talk about survey flow. If I click survey flow at the top here, this is a new screen that I haven't shown you before. But this is where we can do some really powerful things. So you'll see at the moment, all survey flow cares about is blocks. It doesn't care about individual questions so much. So you organize questions into blocks and this is where you can determine which order people are going to see things and who's going to see what. So I can move blocks around. Let's say I decide that actually I should be asking my demographics before information and consent, for example. I can just grab move and move it around. Now what I can also do here is add in new elements. And the elements in survey flow are really what gives Qualtrics its magic. The survey flow, pipe text that we saw in the last video, and another thing called embedded data, which I'll show you here as well. So let's say the info and consent block. I wanna think about what I'm gonna do with people who say no in consent. And this is a flow, this is an order. So I need to kick people out if they've said no to consent just after they've said that. So I click add below, and here are all of the options that are available to me. The ones that I use the most are block, which are your question blocks here, Branch, this is where you can determine who sees what questions, for example. Embedded data, I use all the time, and this is an amazing tool in Qualtrics. Randomizer, which allows you to randomize who sees which questions, for example. This is where you can do experimental research. And the end of survey element, which I'll show you here as well. So what I'm going to do here is a branch. And the condition on this branch is that anyone who in the consent question says no, that's the condition for them to go down this branch, I'm going to end the survey for them. All right, so anyone who said no to consent, once they submit that question, then they will be booted out of the survey. This end of survey element is really powerful. You can not just end the survey for them, but you can customize some things here. For example, you could send them to a particular URL. I sometimes use it to send people to another survey. Say that I want to capture someone's contact details, for example, at the end of the survey, I might say, all right, you filled in all this information for me. I want your email address as well, if you're happy to give it to me, but I won't store it with your data. I'll store it in a completely separate data set, so a completely separate survey. So at the end of the survey, I can just redirect them to the URL for that other survey. Um, you can add in additional thank you emails if you want. So, you know, you can have an email set up for them if you've collected their email address and send them a thing saying, hey, thank you for taking part in the survey. Results will be available on this date. Uh, you can show them a summary of their responses if you want. Uh, and there's various other things that you can do here as well. I'll just leave that as is for now though. There's one more thing I wanna show you here, which is a thing called embedded data. So embedded data is where we can add variables into our data set based on anything that we want. So here I'm going to use a thing called GC and I use this for all of my surveys. I'm going to move this up a little bit so it happens before they get booted out of the survey. So anyone who's gone down this path is not a good complete. I use GC values and GC equals one means that they've completed the survey. So I'll add that right at the end of the survey. Anyone who gets to this point gets a value of one. But here, this person's been booted out because they didn't consent, so I'm gonna say they get a value of two. And I can add another variable in here, which is why they've been terminated, and call that no consent. So that'll actually come out in my data set. I'll get these as new variables in my data set. I could do a thing under gambling frequency, for example, where I'm gonna add embedded data, and I'm gonna uh, call them a gambler with a value of one, if, using a branch, add a condition, their answers for gambling frequency indicate that they've said never in the last 12 months, less than eight times. All right, the same thing that we used in a previous video to determine whether someone was a gambler or not. So I'll move that there. 
And now I've got this variable set up called gambler that will come out with a value of one for anyone who says never in the last 12 months, less than eight times. That is, they gamble on something. So I've got my gambler embedded data variable set up, and that means that I can now use it in my survey flow logic. So I'll use this to show the PGSI block to only people who are classified as gamblers. That is, they have a value of one. This is just like display logic, but not for a single question or an item within a question like we've seen in previous videos, but for an entire block of question. So to do this, I'm gonna create a branch and my condition will be whether the embedded data is a gambler value of one. So I'll add a new branch here. And the condition that I set up is not based on a question anymore, but on embedded data. I'll type in the name of that embedded data variable, which is gambler. And if it's equal to one, then these are the people that I want to be taking the PGSI block. So I've got that branch set up, not on a question, but on embedded data, and I can move this PGSI block below. So not only do I get this gambler data set up ready in my data set for analysis, but I can use it in survey flow here. There are lots of other things you can do with embedded data, and I'll use it a lot more in more advanced future videos to show you some of the cool things that we've been doing in our surveys. But there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's how you can use your scale score for the PGSI in the survey to determine who sees this help seeking block. Remember we decided that it was only appropriate to ask people about their help seeking if they're experiencing a certain level of gambling related problems. And we've set up our PGSI to be scored in the survey. So we're going to use that score here. Now I'll create another new branch and I want to set my conditions. So it's not based on question or embedded data, but on a score variable. And I don't see a score variable in there. So instead first, I'm going to create some embedded data here. I'm going to call this new variable PGSI score. And all the value for this is going to be is whatever the scoring is calculating it to be based on that scoring that I set up. So here I can use pipe text and I can bring through a score that I've set up. My pipe text looks like this. Let's zoom in. A dollar and then a curly sign here, which indicates that this is something embedded in the survey, something behind the scenes. And this address here tells us that we're calling on this PGSI score. Now in this branch, I can use this PGSI score embedded data as my branch condition. So it's PGSI score, and I want them to have a value of at least three. So greater than or equal to three, click OK. And these are the people who will see my help seeking block. So put that on that branch. So you can see that I'm using embedded data to calculate scores in the survey and to use that in survey flow as well. So in this video, I've shown you survey flow, which up until now only just had the blocks in it, but then we started adding in these branches. I used a branch to kick certain people out of a survey if they didn't consent, for example. Um, and I set up some embedded data here to show you how we can set extra variables in our data set. We don't just have to rely on survey questions. Then we use some branches down here to create a specific gambler variable in embedded data, and we use that gambler variable to determine who shows the PGSI. We also did some things here with PGSI score in terms of calculating it and using that scale within a survey to determine who sees which particular questions. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to start testing your survey and getting it ready to be launched.